today I'm bringing you card number two in our Tag Buffet Christmas class that I'm bringing to you jointly with my demonstrator colleague Gina Connor. Let's get down onto the craft table and I'll show you today's card. Okay, so here's the stamp set. Just as a reminder, if you're just catching this video first, um, it's a beautiful set. There's an awful lot of images in here. There's no punches or dies to go with it. And we're just using this stamp set and showing you lots of different possibilities. So on to my next project. Today I wanted to bring you a card similar to this. We're using the same materials, but without the snowflakes on here, we're using the Tag Buffet set. So here's a couple of ideas, just in different color combinations, and I will create that with you today. So first of all, I have cut three circles in different designer series papers. Note these have all got a stitched border on them and I've cut them using our stitched shape framelits. So they, they come in a pack with four circles, four ovals and four squares. Beautiful set and this one certainly gets a lot of use. I'm using my small Stampin' Up trimmer and I'm going to measure each of these circles. Obviously they're all the same but you want to make sure if you've got a one-way design like the candy canes will want to be the right way up and the trees will be, want to be the right way up. We want to cut it in half so that both of those will cut sensibly. So this one, if you follow down my lines here, this one is just under the two inches. So I want this to be roughly a little bit under the one inch. Okay, and that will be cut in half. This one it really doesn't matter. Um, I like to just get those all the little diamonds in the right way, all facing the same way. So again, measuring this from the cutting blade, this is just under the two and a half inches. So I want just a little bit under the one and a quarter. So there's one and a quarter. And I will do those ones. And then the trees. Measuring the trees, they come in at just under three inches. So we want to be just under one and a half. But with the trees, we want to make sure that they are all upright when I cut them. Okay, so that's those two pieces. Both of these we're going to layer up in three. We're going to have one coming like so and one coming like that way. So that's the way we want the trees to be. And we're going to stack them up. It's always better to line them up where you want them to be first. And then we know what we're adhering together. So that is how they will look once we finish. So here I've just stacked them up as I would like them to be with the trees upright, although you're losing some of that detail. Depending on your designer series paper, you will see more. And also the sizes of your circles. You can use any circles for this. So these ones have got a stitch border, but you could equally use um, plain punches as well. So I'm just going to adhere these together. Remembering how they're going to look when you finish as to which end you're actually pivoting from. Okay, there are circles ready to go. So for my card today, I'm using a shaded spruce, half sheet of A4, cut down the centre and make this a, a landscape card. My sheet of Whisper White is 13.3 centimetres by nine centimetres in Whisper White, and it has been textured with the snowflakes embossing folder. I'll attach that down onto my base card and place that in the centre. Multipurpose adhesive, liquid adhesive, does give you a little bit of wiggle room before it's actually set down. So for my next um, piece, I'm going to lay these on here that's how it's going to be looking when we stick them together. But I'm going to place that to one side for the time being and make the banner to go through the centre. Today I'm using a laminated grid sheet in here. If you get any ink on here, you can easily wipe it down. So I'm going to be using um, a strip here and my Merry Christmas sentiment. You will see that by the lines on my grid sheet, this is the inches. And if I use it in the par parallel lines, top and bottom, you will see that this is one inch wide. So I'm going to lay this on here with a magnet at each end, like so. 
I want to get the sentiment in the middle of the card. So if I place my magnet so that I can see the piece underneath as well, that will hold it down nicely. So my greeting is going to go in the centre here, evenly spaced. The same gap either side. And then I'm going to pick up that stamp. This one's going to be stamped in black that we used for the stockings on the last video. I'm inking up my stamp just off the camera here and then I'm going to close that stamparatus and press firmly on the plate. And there is my greeting. If, it, if you've missed a piece or you wanted a little bit darker, you can ink that up again. The magnets has held it in place and so you'll get a nice, strong, clear image. It's really nice. Okay, so I'll take that out to one side. And if I shut this now, if any ink that goes on here would actually just be wipe, can wipe off. So here is our banner punch that's in the August to December Christmas catalogue. So I'm going to use the inward tail this end. And I like to push, push that in as far as I can. And then on the reverse, I do like to just check to make sure that the border either side is perfect. Some of the narrower ones, you just need to make sure that you haven't actually twisted it slightly. And then I'm going to do exactly the same the other end. Line that down the track here. This is available to be used in half inch, three quarters of an inch and one inch. So just to make sure, double check that they're okay on the back and just pop that piece out. So here is my banner. I'm just gonna bring my card back and lay those in position where I think they might like to go. So at this point, it doesn't matter if these aren't perfectly straight because this is going to come through the middle. When you're applying stamp and dimensionals to the back of your pieces, be sure to make sure it's supported enough. If you just placed one either end, you would have a, a quite a, a, a sag piece in the middle here. And so we want to support it, especially when it's going through the post as well. So this one I'm going to leave with a small border on the side here and on the bottom and attach that and the same likewise up there. So I'll turn these over. I'm going to use my multi-purpose liquid adhesive again. Put a generous amount on it because the surface is raised and we want to make sure that it's going to catch all the surfaces where needed. And I'm making sure that this is straight as I pop that down. And then the same with the other piece. Like so. Now before I take off the pads on the back there, I'm just going to lay that over the center and make sure that I'm happy with that. And that looks good and it, it stays within the lines of the card. Just taking these backs off. And then place that through the center. Okay. So those ends look quite bare at the moment, but I'm going to do two more stockings like I did on the last card. So here are my two stockings that I have stamped onto the designer series paper using the black memento ink. That has been fussy cut in full. Then I've stamped it again on the whisper white scrap of card and cut out the top the heel and the toe and adhered those together. You can position these wherever you like. I like to have them at a jaunty angle, but you want to be able to see the circle embellishments on there as well. Okay, so this will stay flat. The top here just wants a little bit of, of dimensional on there. So I'll put some of the small, the miniature, mini dimensionals on the top of there. And I'll put some Tombow in the centre. Multi-purpose adhesive. That one's going to come over at an angle going outwards. And these are supporting the piece over the edge. And this one the same. This one wants to have dimensionals on the top as well. There we go. Remove those pads and then some 
multi-purpose Tombow adhesive in the centre again. It's going to come up at a jaunty angle like so. And these will be maintaining the depth of the banner through the centre. So lastly, I will be using my Wink of Stella glitter brush again. And then colouring the top of the stocking, the heel of the stocking and the toe on both of those images. And there is our finished card and hopefully you can see some of that sparkle on the stocking. Okay, so there's my finished card. So here is my card that we've completed today and the two previously were done with the snowflakes and the snowflake wishes sentiment on there. Have fun with the different colours and combinations of the designer series paper within the Tis the Season designer series paper pack. I hope you've enjoyed my tutorial today. If this is your first visit, please click the subscribe button below. And if you ring the bell too, you'll be notified of future videos as I release them. Gina and I will have our videos strung together in a playlist for this class. And my contact details will be at the end of the video and in the description below. Thanks again for joining me today and I hope to see you here again soon. Bye for now.